be off track as long as I'm following my elder brother. Need to follow my brother. We need to link arms, man, and begin to love on one another more as we know that this is the message that we are our brother's keeper. And we are to keep each other right now. It should not be conflict. It should not be unification enough. There should just be, man, listen, I'm getting to know you. Just, just face the way people are and love them through it and hope for change and pray and it will happen. Because not because you're going to change it, but because God is that big that he is able through his spirit to, uh, to change and convict and, 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 and completely transform something and make it brand new. And think completely different than it did. Are you with me? First Peter 5, 8, if you could put that. I want to talk to you a little bit about, about there's an angry lion out there ready for us. An, an angry lion out there. He's ready for us. And listen, uh, you know, I watched a little bit of the an, uh, I watched a little bit of the Animal Planet channel, and and I found out. Uh, I was just thinking of an old tiger, right? And I thought, well, you know, an old tiger, a young tiger would come and beat him, right? When the fact is, is there is a time when when uh, when his uh, his his ability to conquer is is done, but there is a point when 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 that Old, old tiger is dangerous as anything because he knows he's about to lose everything. And, and, and because he knows that there is, there is it's, it's, it's just a little fraction of time, it's a window, it's, it's just a season for him. It could be a year, I don't know. But there's a season, a time when he can become so dangerous you don't want to get near him. You don't want to put your cuffs in him. You don't want to mess with this line because he knows the clock is ticking and it's ticking downwards and it's time for conquering. It's going to be over. So he's going to conquer his last one as much as he can. And I want you to know that there is a lion and he runs around a roaring lion and he's trying to get you and destroy your home and your life and your family and your wife and your children and your mind and your nervous system and your muscles and your body and your job and your cars and your vehicle and everything else. But God has given authority. He said, I'm going to be with you, man. Listen to me. We need to stay close to God as much as we can now, especially with an angry, roaring lion, knowing that the days are, his days are numbered. Come on, somebody, you, you gotta hit the days are numbered of the devil being here. His days are numbered of his abuse on us. His days are numbered of the way that he treats us. His days are numbered. And because his days are numbered, he's vicious and he's trying to get inside of any of your minds he can to hurt and destroy your family. He's trying to get you to run away from God. He's gonna, I don't know, he'll make you blame it on me. He'll blame it on somebody in the church. Somebody will get the blame and you'll leave the things of God. And right there, as soon as he's got you, he's separated you from the pack and you are dead. Yeah. We need to wake up and understand that we've got, listen, there is an enemy. Be self-controlled and alert. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion. Looking for someone to devour. Devour doesn't mean I'm going to leave a little behind. Devour doesn't mean I'm biting off one of your fingers. Devour means you're going to be completely gone. And I'm talking about people who love Jesus right now. And today they love the Lord. And yet they can get caught up in something that is not even godly. And you get caught up in it and fumbled up in it. Before you know it, you're caught in a net. You're trapped and he drags you away. All the rest of us went left and you went right. And you're on your own and he got you. He's got you by the throat. And he won't stop till he destroys you. Oh, Jesus. God. Oh, man. Lord, have mercy on us. May our hearts, may the decisions of our hearts, and the plans of our minds these next couple of weeks be so dedicated to you, God. May they be so dedicated to you. We cannot afford to be separated from this lion. And that's what they do. That's what, that's what the lion will do. He'll, he'll 
to chase down the, the pack in a moment of weakness and see if you can find that one that will run away, the one that's a little weak, the one that's got an ear towards gossip, the one that's got a tendency for temptation, the one that can be twisted and moved and shoved around. He'll look for that one, and when he's got you separated from the pack, then he comes in and he will take you down. And your generations that should have been after you will be gone. And your family that should have followed up with you will be gone. And your spouse who should have been loving you will be alone. And you who should have been a different person in Christ will be devoured. Are you following me tonight, church? Amen. Right now, we have to get into our minds that we need to stick closer if there's one point for tonight, put this in there. But you need to stick closer than ever to your elder brother, to your brothers. We need to stick closer than ever to each other. Because in doing that, God's presence comes and we, and we create an atmosphere of worship. But not only that, we need to stick close to the things of God. Don't tell me about anybody else's business. Tell me about godly things. Because I'm telling you, he is prowling around. He is roaring like it's his last hurrah. The clock is ticking and he knows it. And any one of us that he can separate, he will devour. And we all lose if one of you get lost. I want to make that clear right now. We all lose if one of you get lost. Amen? It comes to seek, it comes to destroy. So when I'm afraid is the first time that I should really, that, that should be in, in, in a time of fear, panic, and distress, you should really, really, really try to get with the Lord. Amen. And the next one is when you're discouraged. <laughs> Man, anybody ever been discouraged lately? Come on, straight up. You're just, just, you know, I, I, just, it, it, is, it is like a cancer, isn't it? It is like a cancer. I mean, I mean, I mean, the discouragement, it's like, it's, it's like a wingworm, one of the little things that just starts out small and then they just keep going and keep going and just, 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 I'm telling you, man, it's, it, it is like a cancer in your mind. It's like a cancer in your soul. It's like a cancer in your house. It can be like a cancer in your job. It can, uh, man, it can, it can infect my attitude. And everything, and then everything gets infected by this, and everything gets discouraged, everything. It could really just be one thing that's bothering me, but everything before time will be haunting me because discouragement runs through you like a cancer. It just comes to kill you. I'm, I'm going to take you out. I'm going to dismantle you. I'm going to make you unable to walk, unable to talk, unable to do what you got to do. And it's a lie, man. We need to get back up. But one thing in my devotion, I crack my Bible open. I never do. It. And instead of Gideon, he said, Gideon, get up. For you shall leave my people free. You are not a coward, but you are a mighty warrior. And that's the, that's the word God gave me this morning. He said, you are not a coward. Get up. Don't you be this guy. Don't you hide in that wine press. You don't belong in that deep with it. You belong out in the open with your big brother. And no man, no man and no thing is going to come get you as long as I've placed you there. Psalm 61.2. It says, from the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed. Oh, I'm sorry. Did you get that one? I'm cruising a little fast tonight, man. I'm sorry. It's all right. Come on, folks. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. Come on. Be encouraged tonight, man. Be encouraged. Sixty-one two. Psalm sixty-one two. Yes, it says, "From the end of the earth will I call unto thee." When my heart is overwhelmed, that's it, right there. That heart. That word, overwhelmed. When my heart. When my heart is discouraged, when like, this is it, man, lights out. I'm about to be knocked out. I'm on my last one. My feet can't take it. My, man, I mean, I'm buckling. I'm about to go down. When my heart is overwhelmed, my emotions, even, even my heart, even my feelings have been just crushed. And I'm down and out. Anyone know what I mean? I mean, I'm not talking about physically down. You're physically down and you can still rest and sleep at night and get up 
and I'll fight again tomorrow. But I'm talking about when your heart is overwhelmed, your emotions have been, they have just been taken apart piece by piece. He said, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. Take me to the place of safety that is higher than me. When you're discouraged, we need to get with our big brother. We need to be with our elder brother. We need to say, God of heaven, I come before you. I'm going to find a couple of brothers and sisters in Christ. And I'm going to get with them and then we're going to get with you. And we're going to stick with you. And we're going to stay with you. And no matter what happens, we're going to love each other. Amen. Tough times are going to come. And we're going to have to outlast them by staying together. Things are going to be said in this house. Things are going to be told to you and they're going to try to get you to veer off to the left or to the right or go up or go down. And you need to say, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're not going to listen to gossip. We're not going to listen. We're going to serve the Lord, the God most high. Amen. Jesus is also sovereign. Yes, he is. A word that many people don't particularly understand these to be a bank called sovereign bank. To be sovereign is to is to rule and reign over your creation as you wish. It's mine, I'll do what I want with it. Right? He's sovereign. But here, a sovereign God has placed all these wonderful promises for us. I'm not going to leave you. You will not be forsaken. I'm not going to let this lion get you. I'm going to protect you. And when your heart is overwhelmed, I'm going to lift you high. I mean, can you imagine? I mean, this sovereignty, I mean, understand his sovereignty. Next time that you begin to doubt, oh my God, I wonder if he knows this. He is sovereign. He knows exactly what is going on. Don't be discouraged and don't fear. Don't lose heart because God is on the job. He knows exactly what's going on. And maybe through the same suffering that he went through, maybe we'll have to go through some suffering to learn a lesson or two. And we'll come out of this more holy, loving God because at the end of the day, that is the only thing that matters, ladies and gentlemen. Amen. My brothers and sisters, that is all that matters. If, it, if it's going to take a little suffering on my part so I can grow up in Jesus, then bring it on. If it's going to take a little hurt, a little shame, then bring it on. Because that's the, I want to be as close to God. I don't want to be away from Him. Told you I was excited. When you're afraid, number one. When you're discouraged, number two. And when you're lonely. Come on now. You know, you could be like a Michael Jackson, be a millionaire, have all that money, and be alone, and live in Never Never Ranch all by yourself. Right? Like an Elvis Presley, like all these others that we know, that I have so much, and, and, and just, and they're lonely. The absence of, of uh, relationships. I feel that way sometimes. Because sometimes as, as, as a pastor, I can't say everything I know. Some things have to go, uh, you know, I can't even tell Devin. It's, 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 it's very hard, it's, it's difficult. And you feel very much Alone. That is that is the uh, it's the part of this job I don't like. It. That's the only part I don't like. It. When you know one thing, and nineteen people are saying, "Hey, I heard, I heard, I heard, I heard," and you know the truth, and you feel like saying, "You know, I could blow you right out of the water, but I can't. I can't. I gotta shut up." When you feel alone, you feel lonely, please keep this promise. You feel alone, right? He says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. You're never alone. Never. A couple of you, uh, far back, I'll find out. I don't know who the, trekkie, uh, who, the, who the Trekkies are, but a couple of, way back on, on the original, not the original, of the movies, the second movie. They were gonna go meet God at some planet or something like that. God had been drawing them back. 
And James Kirk is screaming at this thing. And then this big old ship turns around. It's a Klingon ship, right? And he gets ready to blast. He says, come on, do it. And it blows all this other thing up. And it saves him and it beams him aboard. And he's aboard this ship. It's a Klingon ship. And he's looking. And Spock turns around in his chair. He goes like this. He says, ah, oh, Spock, I felt so alone. And he says, you were never alone. That's how God is with us. You're never alone. These things seem to be alone. They try to separate you from the pack. They try to make you weak. They try to weaken your resolve to walk with the Lord and to stay with the Lord and to stand fast in the things of God. They try to weaken you. They try to distract my mind and your mind. And, and they try to weaken you from staying with the body. Because if we can get separated, then the lion comes and he will have his way and he will have his day. And I guarantee you that I've seen them come and go in this place. And the minute that they veer off from the things of God, that listen to me, the, listen, this line, he separates your family. He separates your life. He separates your friends. And he separates you from Christ. It happens just that way every single time without fail. It's a plan. It's, got, it's, it's, it's already done. We know his plan. And we still fall into it. I'll shut up with that. <laughs> when I'm facing an unknown future, number four, an unknown future. God, I don't know what you're going to do with me. God, I don't know what you have me doing. God, I wonder what you're going to do with this. God, I wonder what you're going to do with that. I wonder what the call is. God, is there something for me to do? What am I supposed to be doing? The word of God says, I believe in Corinthians. Though I have seen, man has heard, ear has heard, or come to the mind of man what God has to those that love him. 